Alright, so after playing GTA for the last 6 hours straight, I decided to do something only slightly more gangster and make a video of me playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Um, today we're actually going to go over all the decks that I played this week. Uh, I'm going to try to get about 2 games out of each one. And we're not going to do a full deck tech, you can just watch the rest of the videos from earlier this week to get a full breakdown. But we will go ahead and quickly touch on what each of these do. So this one... It's very simple. We're dropping down dinosaurs. We're synchronizing dinosaurs. Um, we have dinosaurs that make dinosaurs bigger. We have dinosaurs that destroy face down cards. We have things that are not dinosaurs but do a lot of damage. And we have a dragon. Uh, what does this dragon do? I totally forgot. I uh, can't negate it. Card effects can't be activated. And it's unaffected by other card effects until the end of the damage step. So, yeah, it's just basically a, uh, an enormous FU dragon, as Red from Overly Sarcastic Productions might call it. I mean, it's got 3,200 attacks, that's pretty good. So, yeah, that's about it. Let's go ahead and get through a couple of games using this dino deck. I was talking with a buddy of mine who saw the original build... Um, and he mentioned that this is most likely going to be the biggest struggle deck that I own at this point. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of support to be fast like the, uh, most of the other decks right now, which is reasonable. It's, it's definitely not incorrect. But we're going to see if we can't make some cool stuff happen anyway. Alright, I'm going first, which is not something I'm super happy about. But what I will go ahead and do is drop a Jurek Velo. And basically we're just completely gambling the first portion of this game. What we're going to do is most likely lose the Velo, and hopefully not die in the process, but we're going to lose the Velo. We'll bring another Velo out. Oh, actually, better yet. Well, 1700 loss attack. So, I think what we'll do is we'll use it to summon a completely different dinosaur, then we'll probably drop, like, Hydrogen or possibly the Velo. Probably Hydrogen. And we will go ahead and Synchro on the following turn. Assuming it doesn't get killed somehow. I mean, it very well could. This guy's only just barely starting his turn. Oh, actually, come to think of it, he moved to combat already, so I think we're safe. Yeah, we're safe. Okay. So in that case, we're going to bring out little Dino Buddy. See, originally I was thinking probably just go get another Velo, but then I was like... Wait a minute, that's completely unnecessary. When we can just bring up the tuner and then drop literally any other dinosaur that we have in our hand. Now, the question is, do I want to put down my other Velo or do I want to put down Hydrogen? And I'm thinking Hydrogen. Yeah. Just because it's got pretty minimal use. So, we're going to go ahead and pull out our big dino boy. And... Confirm. 200 attack for each elemental hero on the battlefield. And then, while we're here, let's see, quick, quick, we got elemental neo space. Basically, just boosts the attack of all neo based monsters. Which doesn't really concern me that much. I mean, it it does to a certain degree because Neos decks are extremely powerful, very consistent, and fairly good at walloping the hell out of anyone playing against them. <sighs> so it's definitely not something you should completely glance over. With any luck, though, I should be able to drop my other my jerk tuner and then. Ooh, or better yet, we could just do that. Um, I'll put down Jerk Velo. 
And then I will put down Power of the Guardians. And we will put it right on top of our Synchro Dinosaur. Move to combat. And we will use our 2100 Jerk. Jerk. It almost sounds like I'm saying Jerk. Bacon Saver, huh? And then we will swing with this, and that should get us pretty much right at where most Neos powered attacks. Monsters effect? Uh oh. Well, that's not good, but at least we have the attack boost. I'm assuming that just negated the attack. Yep, that makes sense. But it doesn't seem logical to put something in there that would specifically. Stall. Um, when you could just make your deck better, more efficient, and faster. Here I am criticizing somebody else's deck when I have been playing probably my worst one. How hypocritical is that? <laughs> All right. Well, we're not going up in ranks, but we are getting gems, and let's go ahead and play another de uh, duel. With this Joey Wheel Wheeler Velo Jurek deck. So I don't think Velo is involved, but. And it's Kaiba versus Wheeler. Let's see if this guy has a better luck stomping me. Probably. Maybe if I just talk down about my deck, I'll, uh, I'll win. It's entirely possible, that's exactly how that works. Okay, not a huge fan of this hand, but at the same time, it's worth it. It could be worse. Alright, so we will drop the Velo. And we're going to put down Fighting Spirit. The purpose that we're for doing this is so that way, if something would remove it, or if... Vela would just straight up be murdered. Then we have a chance at stalling, or then we can uh, use the fighting spirits to get rid of, or to keep it from dying, and then quite possibly pull something to win with. What is that? Oh no, Light Sworns. Light Sworns are busted. Shoot. Not the Light Sworns. I'm telling you, I have nightmares of reading that word. Uh oh. He's summoning a monster. What is it? Oh, it's a Light Sworn. Um, I don't want to activate that effect yet, actually. I don't think about that. I'm gonna wait until it's absolutely certain that we need to wait, is that black wing? Can you mix the two? What are you doing, dude? Um I don't know what that does. It's moving too fast. Okay, apparently I need to re-research light swarms. Oh, they don't damage you. They have a milling effect on them. You go for it. Wait, I should have been able to stop that. Why didn't they let me stop that? Oh, that was completely pointless. Oh, I just made a serious misplay there because... One, I didn't know what the heck I was doing, and two... Um... I timed that badly. I should have waited until they were going for their final move. Most, More specifically, an attack. Mm. 
and get out of my sight to attack you directly. I'm gonna lose. I don't. I don't think I have a. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely gonna lose. I'm not losing this turn, but um, it would take a pretty noteworthy miracle to not lose. I'm sure there's a way to force my opponent to draw three cards. Oh, yep, yeah, nope, I lose. But I'm going to take the bonus and not to surrender. And I will just go ahead and end my turn and get slaughtered on this upcoming turn. No, Light Sworn's dual links or anything that does self milling for benefit is pretty dangerous. I mean, look at that. He's got one card left in his deck. If we had forced him to stall for any longer. He might as well have committed seppuku. <sighs> Alright, well that was it for Joey's Dinos. Uh, I'll take one win, one loss. That's not the worst in the world. So, we'll go ahead and move on to the next deck. Alright, so we're getting back to the Masters of Chaos deck. Uh, I think we're just going in order from worst deck to best. And that's entirely based off of my objective viewpoint, but... Um, just a quick reminder, the main one here that we are doing is Dark Calvary. Um, uh, it doesn't come out actually that often, so I can't call it the main, but you mix a Dark Magician with a Warrior-type monster, and it boosts its attack, it does piercing damage, it's a pretty straightforward beater. This thing pretends to be Dark Magician, it has to be a Ritual Summoned by one, um, and can negate card effects. This just hits really hard, this can hit really hard. This can hit really hard to be special summoned, and that's about it. Once again, if you want to see a full detailed deck list, you'll have to watch the original video. But for now, we're going to see if this absolute jank has any chance of beating anybody else in Silver Tier 1. Which, it could. I mean, we just saw from the, uh, the very first duel with the Joey deck that, uh... There are some people out here who are running a very basic duel strategy. Here I go. Power of Dark. Using Yami on the field, and I don't have a single card that actually helps me. What's the conditions for this? If your opponent controls more monsters than you. Alright, um, I think, I don't think, it, yeah, I have to have the card in my hand, so, the plan here is we're going to set Disciple of the Forbidden Spell, um, just so we can avoid battle damage, and the expected outcome is our opponent does a bunch of nonsense, we have an opportunity to review their deck, and they have a card out on the field for me to drop a uh, Risen Guy, the Fierce Knight, or potentially we draw something significantly better, depending on what happens. Alright, Blazeman Elemental Hero. So this is definitely going to be an Elemental Hero focused deck. That's a polymerization. So we're about to see something pop out the extra deck. Yeah, that's one of the big projects I'm going to work on next. I just unlocked the Jaden Yuki avatar, so I can start collecting elemental heroes soon. I'll probably go with the really basic um, Neos build, but I do eventually want to branch out into more classic elemental heroes, using stuff like Burstina Tricks and Wild Heart and Wingman. Of course, that's assuming I can actually find fusions that are worth it. I remember I used to have a bunch of the fusion forms. Oh goodness, that is terrifying to look at. Look at that. Eagles, the attack of the warrior type fusion materials used to fusion summit, except for Elms of Neos. And I make a second attack during each battle phase. Okay, but you don't take any battle damage from it, so it's just a beater to destroy stuff on the field. Alright, well, that's not the worst thing for us to deal with. Alright, so we're losing the cycle of the Light Sworn. 
And theoretically, we can use it to go ahead and bully out some of the stuff that he's got going on. So... Ooh, okay. That helps. So... Uh, activate effects. And we... Oh, we can't do that. Alright, so we're going to play... The Magician of Chaos. And since I believe this counts as a form of special summon, we should be able... Okay. Nope, nope, I was wrong. I thought I was going to be able to bring out Disciples. Oh, I guess I can, maybe. Still. Oh no. Wait, does he have anything in his hand? Whoa, what can this do? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and activate that effect. I don't know if we can make what he's trying to do, but I do know we can shut down some stuff. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and bomb his uh, his monster in response. Um, or I guess we were gonna bomb his monster. Oh, and it's back to us. Normal summon. Alright, Light of the for our uh, Disciple of the Forbidden Spell. So now I can go ahead and... What does this do again? That has to declare attribute, destroy the monster without applying... Okay, cool. So now we move to combat. And because I declared light, I can go ahead and destroy the big guy without doing battle, uh, battle calculation. Battle damage calculation. Yep. And then I can use my Magician of Chaos to just destroy this fiery elemental hero dude. So that was a relatively good uh, turn for us, fairly good play. The question is, is, is that going to be enough to put us ahead to win? Ideally, the answer would be yes. Realistically, the answer is maybe. He's got five cards in his hand. Next, I've got to remember to read what these do. Uh, well, first off, let's read this. Does make either effects. Um... Oh shoot! I canceled out before I had a chance. Well, with any luck, we will be able to prevent them from doing something significant. Oh, I think he's using it to stall. <clears throat> Possibly. I'm yeah, setting a card. Let's hope he's stalling. This is a light, right? Yeah, it's a light monster, so we can use Disciple again. And if we can, if he passes the turn here, we have the ability to negate, no, we can't negate it, but we can destroy it. So we might win this turn. All right, Magician of Chaos into the hand. We have to combat. We will have our Disciple of the Hidden Spell going and destroy Neos. Putting an end to that problem. And if the activator spill our trap, we can just destroy it. They didn't. We win. Alright. Now let's see if we can't back that up with a second win. That was an excellent duel. Yugi always says that. He always says it's an excellent duel. It could be a crappy duel, I mean, he would expect. That was an excellent duel. <clears throat> it's only really excellent because the writers make him win all the time. 
I know most people have seen the uh, the commentary on this, but you ever notice how Yugi constantly, or whoever the primary protagonist is, constantly has that one card that is perfect for the scenario that they're trapped in? You know that one card that shuts down their trap that removes their ability to play traps and then removes the effect from all of their monsters and oh dude pegasus pegasus is one of my favorites he's straight up an og even though he's kind of uh he's kind of a dick power of dark we're starting with yami on the field well we have chaos fusion and I guess I could pitch my Dark Magician girl for a Black Magician of Chaos. I don't think that's a good idea, actually. I think that. Hmm. Well, I could play Disciple of the Hidden Spell, but I don't know if I'd actually get any benefit out of it. So we'll do it for a stall slash bluff. And call it a turn. Let's see if we got some Toon World nonsense going on today. No. Um. That is not a tune. That is Fire King Avatar. Yo, my disciple. Of the forbidden spell got attacked. Was it forbidden or hidden? Hold on. Let's take a quick look at this, uh. This nonsense here. Especially someone else here from your hand. Okay. Well, um. So we will deal. Let's force that thing off the field. This does mean that we're open for damage, but it doesn't look like he, or at the very last, or at the very least, last turn, he didn't go through and actually play something. I guess he'd say more intense. Does he have an extra deck? He doesn't have an extra deck. That's odd. Is this just a straightforward game plan kind of thing? Yeah, whatever it is. It's definitely going to be more effective than the jank I'm dealing with right now. Oh, I need to upgrade. I need to redesign the uh, spells and traps in this deck to include options for... Fetching cards that I need. I summon a monster in attack position. See, you're just so off flavor not actually using tunes. Oh, I die here. I die to a mixture of bad luck and bad deck building. Alright. Well. One loss and one win, not in that order. It's not the worst thing in the world. So let's go ahead and move on to. Oh, hey, what's this? What is that? Goddess of the Third Eye. Oh, it's the same as that uh, one card. You know which card I'm talking about? I don't know what else these effects are. You can start getting a lot of gems as you move up. Another Swift Gaia. Wow! Sorcerer of Dark Magic. All the way up to Dark Magic Inheritance. Alright, well that's enough eyeballing that. I am going to go ahead and... I think I'm actually going to take a break from this game for a minute and I'll come back and film the other two decks in a little while. Alright, so this time we are doing Red Eye Samurais, which 
um, I've done several videos on, so I'm just not going to bother going over the deck tech. Just a quick reminder though, it does have its upgrades on it, so it should be at full capacity, which means we should theoretically win. Let's see how that goes. Alright, the duel is started. Try rearranging your deck. Obtain powerful cards. Basically, just don't suck. Great advice. <clears throat> Jesse Anderson. And there must be the female version of Joey Wheeler. Alright, I am going first. Okay, so it appears that the first move is going to be Red Ice Fusion. Uh, which is something I'm super happy about, but it works. Um, I'm gonna set the double-edged sword technique. The reason why I'm not happy about it is because we can't get the protection that we need inherently from it. Don't get me wrong, it's good to have a powerful creature out on the battlefield, especially on turn one, but it's even better when you can guarantee that... It isn't likely to get blown up immediately. <laughs> Alright, so the Slash Dragon comes out. And we have to wait patiently. Alright, enter. Alright, let's see what our opponent is playing. Amethyst Cat? What is that? I vaguely remember Crystal Beast being a thing way back in the day, which, you know, means they're probably still a thing today. Let's battle. Go, Amethyst Cat. <laughs> Apparently, there is some type of ability that makes it to where they can attack directly. I'll be honest, that was not the most impressive thing I've ever seen in my life. Alright, so what I'm going to do is normal summon Kagekai. I summon a and then I am supposed to summon Hand of the Six Samurai. And I'm thinking what I'm going to end up doing is probably use Hand's Effect to sacrifice Kagekai to destroy the cat. And we might be able to pull off a win from that afterwards. So... Make my monsters effect. Some cogs the graveyard. And we're gonna destroy the cat. I play my equip spell! Crystal release! I'm not sure what all that was. Perhaps we should read these real quick. That doesn't help. Yeah, well, what does it do in the Star Trek? Does it act like a monster or what? Pretty unclear about that. Get out of my sight! I attack you directly. I think we fight the Star Trek and we'll put a Kai Kai or whatever down underneath it to boost power. Give it a little bit of additional protection, but I think we just win right now. <clears throat> kind of an unusual way to go about winning, but I'm not going to complain, and ultimately we got the desired results. Get another dual win. Let's see if we can get two consecutive wins for once. All right, so let's what <laughs> tribute summoning advice? I know there are decks that actually specialize on tribute summoning, but I don't know what they are. Well, it didn't mean to hit my volume. Alright, 
We're going second. Uh, looks like we have a immediate uh, Shein. And we're going second, which I think in this situation is fairly beneficial. Keeper of the Dragon, huh? What's that do? If this says normal special summon, you can discard a card and add Polly to your hand. Or a fusion normal spell. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Dude, check this guy out. Instant Neos. Dang. Hey guys, Elemental Heroes got powerful in the last seven years since I stopped playing, huh? Alright, what is our answer here? The problem is, is Brave Neos is too big to take out, and the only thing we could really do is do damage with Keeper of the Dragon. Um, let's take a look. I don't really have an applicable out. The only thing I can think to do is since we have the ability. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I hate doing this, but we gotta stall for time. <clears throat> we don't got no support cards to back it up. Normally, we'd have something that would allow us to boost our attack, but we don't have that right now, so we ain't gonna get no good uh, attacker out of this. So we just gotta play it safe and. Hope we don't take lethal damage at least. Let's see what kind of stuff it pulls off. Oh, lovely. Well, right now we're facing 2,800 points of damage currently. Mass change, huh? That's where he transforms a uh, elemental here into something else. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what it is. Okay, that's got 3,000. So we're still not facing lethal, but we're still, but we are facing. That's, okay, now we're facing Lethal. Now we lose. Yo, why are you playing Necro Valley in this deck? That's an interesting choice. All that really does, aside of work really well with Necro stuff, is it makes it to where you can't play stuff out of your graveyard. <clears throat> Alright, well, that was both interesting and insanely unfortunate. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's six Samurais today. Now let's move on to the Izer. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and finish up with the Izer deck real quick. Uh, just a quick reminder, basically all we're doing with this deck is we're going to be pulling out one of these level 10 monsters. Uh, preferably Odin, but we also have plenty of other heavy hitters with awesome effects uh, in case Odin is not the one that we pull out. So let's get these last couple of games and see how it goes. <clears throat> All right, we are going against Seto Kaiba. Coin flip. We're going second, which is perfectly fine. I'm finding more and more that I like having a reactive play style. Unless I can definitely get aggression out. And in none of the games that I play, can aggression happen on the first? Well, that's not true. You can do that in Magic. So, in Magic, I almost, I pretty much always prefer going first. But in Yu-Gi-Oh! and in Pokemon, I like attacking first. Because I always get the most notable advantage. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. All we really have right now is the thing that Special Summons, which isn't super great. But, we do have some traps that'll help us out, so I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and drop this in defense position. <laughs> Run complete back row. Which is really good, because most likely they're going to assume that these are a lot more dangerous than they really are. And... Hopefully... Well, almost definitely we'll be able to pull something big on the follow-up turn. Yeah. I think what we can do is we can get the thing that pulls in Herjures out. And then just literally any... No, we don't do this yet. Okay, so all they did was set a single card. 
So we will go ahead and activate the thing that literally just pulls whatever. And we will go get our, our instant Odin. Oh shoot, but this is still on the battlefield. That's a bit of a problem. But actually, not as much of a problem. Because what I can do is I can normal summon this. And then I can use her ability to special summon the... I think it's a Valkyrie is what it's called. No, we're not going to activate any other effects. And then I think on the following turn we can even pull out Loki if we need to. But for now, we are going to special summon Odin. Tuner, normal, normal. I'm telling you, I'm actually fairly surprised that this isn't a much more commonly played deck because this is just an absolute solid beater with a lot of utility and backup. This might even be a winning swing right here, depending on what that trap is. Nope. We are not attacking. Uh, doing anything. Yep, okay. One shot kill. That was pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. Okay. I can now use Master of Magicians. Alright, that's cool. Um, mess around with some Dark Magician stuff later. I can't help but feel like this entire game caters towards nostalgia in any way that it possibly can. Because they got buffers for Dark Types, they got buffers for Arch Fiends, they got buffers for Blue Eyes, Warriors, all kinds of stuff like that. I was talking with my buddy Denny again, and he was mentioning that uh, pretty much none of the stuff that is good in Duel Links is as good in regular Yu-Gi-Oh, which makes sense. I mean, for one thing, I've not once seen a single copy of MST available. We really ought to change my play map, because Red Eyes Black Dragon is only relevant towards one of my decks. An attack position monster. What? No way, it's a Dark Magician's Rod? It's not, not at all something possible. It's, it's not something people play. <laughs> I love sarcasm, it's so fun. Okay, so I have Instant Odin again. I also have the ability to summon Loki on the following turn, so I think that makes our path fairly straightforward, so. Wait, do I have the ability to summon Loki on that? Okay, I might have the ability to summon Loki on the following turn. But for now, Valkyrie comes down. Uh, oh, shoot. I had to put her down before I put the... Ooh. That's the downside. This is very tricky to play. Um... I guess we will... Hey, look, a car. My turn is done. It's my turn. Alright. I draw a car. Yeah, I decided to play this outside because it's quieter than the inside of my house at the moment. I think I'm going to lose this one just out of pure failure to remember how to properly play my own card. Cards. Alright, so I'm going to use this to go get probably my Nordic Beast dude. Just because right now the current goal is, since I'm about to lose that Valkyrie, to play Loki on the following turn. As it's about my only chance of winning. But I did kind of leave myself up for a ton of damage, so... That said, it doesn't look like I want to take a ton of damage. Alright, cool. That's fine. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and... Bring out our Loki Maker. Alright, 
then we will special summon Loki. If this is our confirmed turn, and we will use this dude and this dude. And boom, we have Loki. Yep. I just love how this deck literally just is straight up instant power at any given point in time. Ooh, I think my battery just went really far down. Alright, so go ahead and end the turn. And see how our opponent looks towards reacting. <laughs> Uh oh. Is that Yu Gi Oh Heart of the Cards BS? No, it's the end of your turn, huh? Well, if any luck, that'll be the end of this game as well. Well, luck, it appears, is not actually completely on my side, so I'm just going to set a card for now and move to combat and see if this is my killing blow. I do have the ability to disengage the activation of a spell of crap. Uh oh. Face down card. Trap activates. And. Trap cancelled. Yep. Now let's see if that other card. Nope, didn't save him. All right, well, that's it, and because I unfortunately ended up messing up my filming for today and did this late, that's going to be the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! for this week. So, hopefully you enjoyed it. Again, any deck, su deck upgrade suggestions for any of these four decks uh, are welcome, but other than that, thanks for watching. And in a couple more weeks, we'll see if I have any new decks or if we're just going to be playing this stuff again. Maybe with some upgrades. 